Good morning. Man, it's cold out there. It is. Man, thank you for being here. I know it was not easy walking to the car this morning or getting it started and all those things, um, but you're here, and well done. Um, let's, let's go to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you for who you are today, Father. We thank you for, God, just your faithfulness. Lord, we pray that, God, you just open our hearts this morning and speak to us. And, uh, Father, we pray that, that it's you. It's you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So, you guys are very gifted people. Did you know that? Yeah, some of you do. Some of you don't. So, we're, we're always, we're a volunteer-driven church. Like, we're always looking for people to serve. And, hey, welcome, college kids. Welcome back, by the way. Um, but we're always looking for people to serve and, and be part of this, and this is how this works. Like, we don't just have professionals. We have volunteers. Everybody gets a chance to, to serve the Lord. And we get to meet with you, with a lot of you, and, and, we, and we ask you, like, we, you know, what are you, what are you good at? What energizes you? What do you do? And uh, you, it, it's pretty common that you say, and not everybody, but most people say, uh, I'm, not good at, I'm not good at anything. Like, you're not good at anything? No, I'm just, I'm just not good at anything. This, yeah, so um, and we see this quite often, and just like, no, you've got to be good at something. And turns out, you're good at more things than I'm good at, and, and that is, like, overwhelmingly the case. I mean, I, I know some of you guys are, are, are gifted musicians. Um, some of you are, are just awesome with hospitality. And let's just say these represent you and all the gifts that you have. Maybe you are a gifted storyteller. Man, I've, I've listened to you guys out in the foyer. Y'all can tell some big ones. And, uh, and, and maybe you are, are just, you're great at listening to people. You know, that's, that's, that's hard. It's hard to do. Maybe you're good at counseling. Maybe you are, you know, any, any number of things that, that you may be good at. And I, I want to tell you kind of a story about where I came from. When I went to college... Y'all didn't know I went to college, did you? Yeah, I went to college for a short time. But so when I got out of high school, I was like, I'm, I'm going to be a famous musician. Like, it's, it's going to happen. It's not if it's going to happen, it's when it's going to happen. So I go to this big college, not a big college, it's college, big music college in uh, South Plains. It's in Leveland. And uh, they had this huge music program. And supposed to be top-notch. So I, I go out there, take my guitar with me, and I meet some people on the first day in my dorm that are better than I am now. Like, they're 17-year-old kids that are just amazing. And I'm just like, man, that was my gift. That's what God, you know, and, and you know, maybe it wasn't that I had, um, it, it just took the wind out of my cell, right? So whatever it was that, <laughs> that the Lord has given you, he begins to water it down. And it gets watered down with every, with every bad thing that happens in your life. And this fire that was supposed to take off and spark up and start and lead you into a, uh, into a life of prosperity, and it gets to where you can't light it. So right off the bat, I was poor in spirit. Like, I'd go out there, put all my eggs in that basket, and I fail, and I come back poor in spirit. Many of us have lost uh, loved ones had bad relationships, and we're in mourning, and that takes some more wind out of your cell. It's hard to get up 
and do anything. I know it's hard to watch this. This would be wet because it's so cold outside, but or many of us are, are hungry and thirsty for something, but we don't even know what it is. And uh, so you just don't do anything. So I want to I remind you, like last week we were talking about John the Baptist and, uh, and kind of what he came to do. He came to usher in something new, right? And John the Baptist came in the spirit of Elijah is what the Bible tells us. So I'm going to take you to a story. So to look at John the Baptist, right, we got to we got to go back further. We got to go back through the Bible. We got to look at Elijah. See what he was all about. So I want to take you to a place in 1 Kings chapter 18. And this is a place called Mount Carmel. This is a time about 100 years after after King David, Elijah had called for the rain to stop. Like Israel had become so evil, Elijah was was one of the only prophets left, and he was like, let's just, let's just stop the rain. He prayed for it to stop, and it stopped. And, and we we're three years into this drought, and um, there was also this king. This king was Ahab. His wife was Jezebel. They were possibly the most evil people in the Bible. Jezebel had followed, had led everybody to follow these other gods. It was Baal. And, and she had killed so many of God's actual prophets, like God's prophets. So we go to this place at Mount Carmel. In 1 Kings 18, 20, it says, So Ahab summoned all the Israelites and gathered the prophets at Mount Carmel. Then Elijah approached all the people and said, How long will you waver between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, follow him. But the people didn't answer him a word. Okay, I want you to look at this two opinions. Have y'all felt that before? Like we are, have all the, everything is set up to follow God, but man, it's hard. You lived in this world we live in? Everything is pulling for your attention. Everything is pulling for, for everything you got to make you have two opinions. Like in the book of James, it calls it being double-minded. And man, I've been double-minded. I've been double-minded. So at this time, all the other prophets, God's prophets, has been killed. Elijah is the only one left. Elijah says, we will both build an altar. So, so he, he's, there's, a, there's a showdown fixing to happen between, between these gods. They bring all the people in. Elijah says, we will both build an altar and prepare a bowl for a burnt offering, but don't light the fire. And let's see whose God delivers. 1 Kings 18, 26. We're going to skip a few verses. So they took the bull. They gave them. Okay, they, <laughs> so they took the bull that he gave them, prepared it, and called on the name of Baal from morning until noon, saying, Baal, answer us. But there was no sound. No one answered. Then they danced around the altar they had made. At noon, Elijah mocked them. He said, shout loudly, for he is a God. Maybe he's thinking it over. Maybe he wandered away. Or maybe he's on the road. Perhaps he's sleeping and will wake up. Like, so they're, they're all jumping around, worshiping this God, trying to get him to bring fire down to light this sacrifice. And it's not happening. So it goes from, from morning to noon. And then in 28, it says, they, shout, they shouted loudly and cut themselves with knives and spears according to their custom. This is what they did. This is how they worshiped this God. They cut themselves until blood gushed all over them. 
all afternoon. They kept on raving until the offering of the evening sacrifice. Okay, so we've gone, gone from morning, we've gone to noon, and now we're, now we're to evening. We've, we put a full day in, but there was no sound. It says, no one heard our God and that you have turned their hearts back. Then the Lord's fire fell and consumed the burnt offering, the wood, the stones, and the dust, and licked up the water that was in the trench. When all the people saw it, they fell face down and said, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. So remember, we're looking at this uh, to, to understand who John the Baptist was. Okay? So they're dumping this water. He's dumping this water on there, which I believe I've, that this is a foreshadowing of baptism. He is, he is completely drenching the, the 12 stones, the, the wood, the sacrifice, and everything. And, and there is, there's so much water here. And where do we, what do we see John the Baptist coming and doing? He comes out of the wilderness and it says he is baptizing God's people in the Jordan. So Elijah is leading the, the people of Israel to repent, to repentance. That's, that's his job. That's what a prophet does. When Israel steers away, God sends in a prophet. He says, send them back the other direction. And that's what John the Baptist is doing. In Matthew 3, 11, we went over this last week. I baptize you with water for repentance. But the one who is coming after me is more powerful than I. I'm not worthy to remove his sandals. He himself will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Okay. If you don't understand, Jesus gives us, or John the Baptist gives us this illustration in verse 12. His winnowing shovel is in his hand. And he will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn. The wheat will be in the barn. He's he's keeping it safe. But the chaff that comes off the wheat, he will burn with fire that never goes out. Okay, right off the bat, we can we can kind of tell that these are two different baptisms, right? So John brings a baptism of water for repentance. Jesus does something else. And we don't get to see this clearly until Jesus goes up. But why fire at the end? That seems a little hot. Like, I don't, I don't want to be baptized in fire. I'm, I'm good with the water baptism. The fire baptism, uh, I can do without. But I'll do it if I have to. So I, I just kind of want to look at what, what the fire symbolizes in the Bible. So first thing that we can find is is God destroys with fire. Fire is judgment. Judgment is coming, okay? Okay, God destroys Sodom and Gomorrah. We also know at the end there's there's this lake of fire in the mix, right? We don't want to be there. That's where we don't want to be, okay? But also God's presence usually involves fire. So, God is represented as fire through the, throughout the Bible. But the fire also represents a new direction. Okay? So, we have all these instances in the Bible. In Exodus, um, God appeared to Moses in a burning bush. Well, Moses wasn't doing anything, and God shows up in this burning bush, and he, he gives him direction, right? But he knew it was God because he was this fire that wasn't consuming. It was, a, it was a fire in a bush that wasn't, the bush was not consumed. In Exodus 13, God leads the Israelites with a pillar of fire. Okay, so that's something new. Is it? Like, God is leading his people out of, out of Israel, I mean out of Egypt, as a pillar of fire, and then there's this there's this point in the in the story when they when they get to the Red Sea and they're just he's led us he's led everybody there and then this fire repositions himself in between him and the Egyptian army, in between God's people and the Egyptian army. So he's protection, right? 
So protection, direction, judgment. What do those three sound like? Sounds like Jesus. Jesus is all of those. So when Jesus leaves this earth, the Spirit comes down. Okay? John offered this opportunity to repent, and Jesus is offering us eternity. This flame that, that shows up is the manifestation of the living God. Okay, this is the fire that, that separates in tongues in, in, uh, in the, the Pentecost. Okay, here's another one. When the Holy Spirit arrived in the upper room at Pentecost, there came a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and divided tongues of fire appeared on them and rested on each one of them. Okay, this is, this is another direction thing. But this flame is the manifestation of the living God, and we get a piece of it. We get a piece of it. And when you have this this piece of the Holy Spirit, you get fruit, and you begin to change. And that's what he's talking about, this baptism of the Holy Spirit. We begin to be made new from the inside out. And all these things that, that were watered down, that were, that were useless for building a fire, right? I mean, you couldn't, you couldn't, if you put all this stuff in the fireplace, you'd have to dig it out and start over again. Um, but I want to tell you this, God would just prefer that it is wet, okay? Because what you think is useless, he is going to make a fire, see what I did there? Yeah, so everything that seemed hopeless to God might as well, I mean, seemed hopeless to us, might as well be a gasoline to God. So um, Matthew says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek. All these things that we were that we were keeping from getting our fire started, Jesus is like, that's where I'm at. That's where you find me. But also, it symbolizes judgment. Let's not forget that. Justice is coming. But the fire that we were once afraid of We now welcome. Worship team, if you guys want to come up. If this fire scares you, if this is a, this judgment fire that I talk about, if this is something that, that frightens you, you're missing something. You're missing something. You need to be redeemed. And we have a, a savior. That that's 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 his game. That's why he came. He came to the to the brokenhearted, to the poor in spirit, to the ones who mourn, to the weak. For those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, and, and he, he comes to them. So what's the next step? God wants your heart. He wants to repurpose you. If you've got things that you know that God has given you, gifts, things like something like, like me for music. I know God put music in my in my bones. He also put other things in my, in my heart and, and gifts that I have that, according to me and my own devices, I have made useless. But God repurposes those things. We heard a, 
that, that song earlier, God, God takes what the devil made for evil and he turns it for good. And that's, that's his specialty. 1 Corinthians 3 says, For no one can lay any foundation other than that has been laid down. That foundation is Jesus Christ. If anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, each one's work will become obvious. For the day will disclose it, because it will be revealed by fire. The fire will test the quality of each one's work. If anyone's work that has been built survives, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned up, he will experience loss, but he himself will be saved, but only as through the fire. So, believers, I want you to think about your work. I want you to think about your work that you're doing here in this life and, and just understand that it's going to be put through the fire. If you are spending your time and spending your efforts in something that isn't going to make it to the kingdom, what is the point? What is the point? So that's what I want to, I want you guys to think about. And me too, this is out of conviction. I'm telling you this because, um, because I've been thinking about this myself. What are we spending our time on that, that is going to be worth anything in heaven? If you don't have a, a relationship with Jesus, understand that this fire is very real. And we're all going to have to be judged one day. And we're all going to have to give an account for our time here. And if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, don't, don't leave without putting that on a connection card or talking to somebody or do something. Um, don't just not do anything. I did that for so long. I did that for so long. Talk to somebody. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today, God. We thank you for all you do in our lives, Father. We thank you for, um, God, this fire that represents you. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, God, that rests on us. And when, and when we get the Holy Spirit, Father, we, we know that we change. We, we become followers and not just believers. God, we, we begin to do things differently. Father, and I, and I pray that over everybody here. I pray that everybody would, would receive that spirit. Father, we, we also pray for, for all those who, who are going through, the, going through something. Maybe they're going through a fire, Lord, and, and they're being tested, Father. And I, I just pray that, that you speak wisdom into their lives, Father. And God, we, we ask that, God, that everything that we do, we would be able to look back when we're in heaven and, and know that what we're doing today is worth it. Father, we praise you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may stand and worship with us.